This is Dow Phoenix, and today we are reviewing Coffee Crisis, which is a beat em up action game where you play as your choice of two baristas that are here to save the earth from aliens, country music fans, old people, and all kinds of other crazy beings. You have to fight to defend our earth from devastation. This game is published and developed by Mega Cat Studios, who I would like to thank for graciously providing me a key for the Xbox One version of this game for review. This game is also available on Steam, and they even have a retroized version you can pick up for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. Is Coffee Crisis going to give you a shot of awesome video game espresso, or does it barely percolate excitement? Let's find out. Coffee Crisis starts us off at the Black Forge Coffee House, where our heroes Ashley and Nick first encounter the aliens and kick their asses with a bag of coffee beans. They uncover a very convoluted plot involving Kenny Chesney, I mean Skinny Chesney, Metal Jesus Rocks and Alpha Omega Sin, heavy metal bands such as Nile, Lords of the Trident, Hair Riser, and Psycho Stick, and an alien race called the Smurglians, who search throughout the universe for the heaviest metal riffs and blackest coffee to power their radically advanced civilization. Let's just say it's a lot to take in, but it is a blast to experience. The gameplay of Coffee Christ will feel familiar to anybody that has experience in the beat-em-up genre. You have your usual buttons to attack and jump, as well as some extra buttons for throws and using a special move that'll drain a little bit of your life. This game will throw a lot of enemies at you, which generally only take a few hits to kill, with tougher sub-boss enemies mixed in during some stages. Some stages will also have a boss enemy that will have extra health and in general will be tougher to kill than the other enemies. Sometimes it can get pretty hectic as you may see a dozen or more enemies on screen at once, a lot more than the usual beat-em-ups. That's why it's important to use your full roster of moves as well as picking up various power-ups and weapons throughout the stages. Power-ups are available for healing your health, gaining 1-ups, as well as damage multipliers and temporary invulnerability. There are also some cosmetic power-ups that can change the look of the game, such as giving it a classic CRT look or night vision for a limited time. Weapons are pretty much your standard fare with some exceptions, like a guitar that shoots a three-way shot, but most of them are going to be melee weapons like road signs, swords, and baseball bats, to name a few. The game has an art style that really suits the type of game it is, given that it is a retro throwback. Visually, it looks similar to the original Genesis version, but with some enhancements to the overall aesthetic. It is a bit cartoony and a bit pixelated, but it feels right for it. The animations could be more robust, but I feel the way that they are is a deliberate choice rather than an artistic shortcoming. There are a lot of different environments you can fight in, giving you a great mix of vistas to beat them up in. There are also a large variety of enemies that have easily recognized personality to them. One of the main star attractions of this show, though, undoubtedly is the music. The musical score that you're listening to right now is all from Coffee Crisis and was performed by Greywalker, a metal band from Pittsburgh. The soundtrack in Coffee Crisis brings you the heavy, crunchy guitar riffs that an evil alien race may come to Earth to abduct. But it would have been a nice bonus if the Genesis soundtrack was also an option for chiptune fans. Fortunately, the coffee drinking minigame in between some levels to earn 1-ups does offer a taste of this. That being said, there are a couple of issues I do have with Coffee Crisis. The big elephant in the room is the collision detection. It just feels iffy. It's not to say that it's buggy or broken, but it certainly doesn't feel as solid as I would have liked. There are times when you hit an enemy or vice versa when it doesn't seem like it should connect or there are times that a seemingly precise hit doesn't register. It seems the lanes in general feel kind of generous for hitting or getting hit by enemies. This problem isn't all that bad when you consider that it does work both ways and that if utilized correctly, it can work to your advantage. 
but it does somewhat hurt the balance of the game overall, as you have to rely on exploiting the mechanics to get past some of the toughest challenges in the game, such as the previously mentioned hordes of enemies. And not mastering these intricacies can lead to losing your lives quicker than you might expect as well. At least some of the tried and true beat em up staples, like the jump kick maneuver, tend to be fairly effective. Now there was one thing that bothered me about this game, although it's not about the game itself, but two people that are in this game, Metal Jesus Rocks and Alpha Omega Sin. You may know them of course from YouTube, they're big YouTube gaming stars. But it's just weird that they never seem to actually talk about this game. Granted, they aren't huge parts of the game and they're under no obligation to talk about it, but they have segments of storyline and art in the game dedicated to them and even special battles. I know if I was personally featured in a game like this, I would want to help promote this game a bit more and at least do a short video on it. Though when I tweeted this to MJR, he did retweet back about this game at least. And though there was no mention of the cameo, him and Reggie did talk about this in a pickup episode a long time ago. Though it's still kind of weird that I've heard other YouTubers talk about this game more than they have despite not being in the game. But yeah, if you happen to be fans of either of these YouTubers, you'll be pleased to know that they're in it, and don't forget to share them a little tweet or Instagram post to remind them. And if you don't enjoy them, well, they are only a small part of the game, plus you can feel good about kicking their butts. Mild rant aside though, I do find Coffee Crisis to be a worthy game to check out if you're an enthusiast of heavy metal music, coffee, or retro beat-em-ups. There is also a decent dose of referential humor that you will find in cameos from bands Psychostick, Nile, Lords of the Trident, and Terrorizer that fans of underground metal will certainly appreciate with their own short ties into the story of the game. Also, there is some interesting mixer integration that allows viewers to participate to affect the streamer's games at various intervals. It is not a game without faults so, though, and as I have previously mentioned, the gameplay just isn't as solid as I would have hoped. It is still plenty playable, however, and I think Coffee Crisis for the Xbox One and Steam is worth a solid 7 out of 10. Though the gameplay itself does have its problems and the game just feels a bit repetitive overall, I really enjoy the style of the game and the humor as well as the kick-ass music from Greywalker. This game will be coming later this year on Nintendo Switch and early next year for PlayStation 4 if you prefer those platforms. And as I mentioned before, there is even a Sega Genesis version that you can pick up on a spiffy watermelon colored cartridge which is of course also compatible on the Sega Mega Drive if you live across the pond. Links to buy Coffee Crisis will be in the description as well as pinned comment. Let me know what you guys think of Coffee Crisis and is this a game you're interested in if you haven't played it? With that, Down Phoenix out.